Hey guys, Miss Michelle Fix It, otherwise known as Michelle Fix It. Today is June the 4th, 2023. I had a cat nap, we did a birthday party, we went to Costco, we did a shopping trip. Husband Cat and I just worked on the Trailblazer. And so she's not perfect, <laughs> but like she's been vacuumed uh, because I almost forgot <laughs> in the midst of my chaos. And look, I already have a bunch of stuff. I had to bring back to Baltimore. So I almost completely forgot that I have a, um, I can't even remember what the test is called. <laughs> There's a tie of a test tomorrow, uh, with neurology, uh, because I feel the Romberg thing. Uh, and so I just happened to be like working on, okay, I need to do dad's taxes. I need to do this, da, 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 da. And then I was like, oh, let me look at my schedule, my calendar tomorrow. I was like, oh geez, husband cat, we have to like do it. So. Um, I did get my Zio thing. I'll flip it around. So I did get my Zio box because I lost this box in the midst of the chaos that is my life. And um, so when I went into the cardiologist appointment, and I'm leaving it in my dash so that way I will not forget that I have to like actually drop this off at the post office. Um, but basically like I have to, I knew that I needed to mail it off and I knew that I needed to keep the box because I'm here, there and everywhere. I completely misplaced the box. I have no idea, but I of course kept up with the, the heart monitor. So when I went into the cardiologist, she was like, you need to mail this out because like we need to see what the results are. It's like, oh, okay. Um, so I'm sending that off and then I have an appointment with her. Um, it was 17 days because she was very precise with everything and she's like, you know, it's going to take like three days for it to come in the mail to you and then you have to mail it out, blah, blah, blah. And then that way I can get it and they will give me the information and she's probably going to poke at me because like I was taking meticulous notes and then like I ended up in the hospital and all this other craziness. So yeah, I know I'm like giving all this information that you guys don't care about, but maybe you do care about it because maybe you're on your own little medical journey, but you know what? You guys just get like a snapshot of my whole entire life. Um, Izzy worked on her homeschooling stuff, which, you know, she does all the time, but like this time, whenever I was working on her, um, spelling test with her, she, I just kind of thought about it and I was like, you know what, like this would be something that would be great to film as well because she, she, I don't treat her like a normal child would be like most children that are in school. They get their spelling words and they have to do so many of them. And so for me, I have exceptionally high standards for her because I realize that she's like me and she might have a little bit of dyslexia um, or possibly dyscalculia. And I'm not trying to like force those things on her. Like if she doesn't have those things, then that's great. But basically she has worksheets that she's supposed to do every day. And then she has spelling words that she's supposed to do every day. And because repetition is such a big thing, she also does a spelling test every day. So what I'm going to try to do, and hopefully this will be a reminder video since I have so many people that are going to be reviewing my videos. Um, this is a reminder that at the beginning of the week, I need to do a video on spelling because there are adults that have issues with spelling. There are children that have issues with spelling. There are children like the parents are busy. And so what I did quite some time ago is I went and looked for all the fourth grade words for her and I typed them all out and I made it where there was a breakdown of 10 words per week um, so that her proficiency with the words would be better. And luckily for me, I had a very special, awesome mommy cat that was very dedicated to me learning spelling words because that was an area that I just did not excel in. And she knew that it was critical for me to, you know, be at least proficient. So while I have an extended vocabulary and I can talk to you about all the medical jargon and stuff like that, sometimes, sometimes I have to like Google words because my brain does little tricks on me on is this spelled the correct way and I don't want to, I don't want to seem like I don't know it because it, it's, it's this hang up that I have and it's, it's, you know, it's just something that's been there lifelong. And a lot of people are embarrassed of, you know, writing things down and stuff like that, or even texting sometimes with any type of written or formal communication. So what I think I need to do is at the beginning of the week, I'll go through with a video with the words. And that way, if someone needs to work on their, their spelling, because maybe they also have a hang up on it, or maybe it's a child and you just want to do that independently because they're in the public school, but like you want other stuff, or maybe you're a homeschooling mom and your child's in fourth grade or whatever the reason is, 
I'm going to do those because it's something that we do every day anyways. So I'll make a video and it'll say these are our spelling words and you know write them 10 times each and I will do what I do with her which is I'll have the word and then I will spell out the word and then I will use it in a sentence so that she understands its word usage and its language usage and then whenever we're doing the spelling test it's typically like if it's buying um, number one buying um, I will be buying a new car one day and then she understand that it's not you know buy like see you later it's buying as in purchasing and so it kind of helps her and we do that every day so I'm not going to do one every day but I'll do the spelling words the initial spelling words the instruction on it the words spell them phonetically if I need to do that uh, show the piece of paper if I need to do that and then like one of the first spelling tests that she gets and then how I grade her to keep her self-esteem high so she gets to do her own little spelling um, she gets to self check herself but some children are, are not um, at that range where they need to be self checked and then she just did it so <laughs> okay and so this was her this was her first one and it's a 50% because like we did take a little break on it so I'm going to, she's very proud because her first time she has a 50% and we kind of track it too. So her words were bubble, building, built, busy, button, buying. Oh, I'm so proud of you on buying. You did a great job with that one. Camera, very proud about that one as well. Cardboard, caring, and carrying. And look, she even gave herself a thumbs up. <laughs> This is a way that you can help your child learn. And yes, it's nighttime, but we're homeschoolers. So like Yay. she does far more than she would do if she was in a more formal setting for public school. And she Yay. also, and she's jumping around the yard. <laughs> oh. I got that demon <clears throat> Good job, baby. This is the hardest one to get. Oh, cardboard was the hardest one to get? Can you tell? Oh yeah, but you got it. And so this is a way that like, for me, I'd rather have exceptionally- I, just, I had to squish in the O because I was like, uh, uh, uh. And then I was like, oh, oh. <laughs> so I was just squishing it in. Yeah, and other people like, would be like, oh, it's not, you know, super exciting that she has a 50%. If this is the first time that she's doing these words and she has a 50%, yes, it is exciting. Because that means that she has a core proficiency with these words already. Because all she did was write them down and put them into memory and be able to regurgitate them on paper. So we celebrate every single little milestone. And we will be on an awkward, weird schedule because we have an awkward, weird life. Um, but the thing is, is that if she was in a formal school, she would not have the one-on-one -on -one that she gets and consistently and constantly being corrected in a nice way. So her language usage, I mean, when she takes her CAT test and everything, the California Achievement Test, um, she scores really, really high. Like her lowest thing is math and she's, she's like two grade levels ahead of where she's supposed to be. And she would not be in the situation she she's in academically and being able to focus and hyper focus on things that she really enjoys um, if she wasn't homeschooled. And you know, the other day I heard on the radio that there's like a child that's about to graduate to go to high school and they already have a bunch of college credits. And so like that's going to be one of the things that I look into or look into for her is I have no problem homeschooling her as long as she wants to be homeschooled, as long as we can keep up with socialization, as long as we can acclimate to her homeschooling stuff, my work life, um, Charlie's medical complexities, because I never thought I would be on this adventure. But like, I love it because she's always with me and she's a great little sidekick. So basically, you guys are going to get even more stuff that I didn't even think about doing with you um, because maybe there's some adults or children that just need a little bit of help. So that's the end of my video because we still have to like load up the rest of the laundry because I have to get that over to Georgetown and then I have to like, I might have to crash at Georgetown because I'm going to be getting in late and like we basically 
or people would have like, we have like too many house, too many boxes right now. We're going to get that squared up. So you guys have a great night. Um, I will see you next time and let me know if there's anything that you guys want us to do a video on. All right. Thanks. Bye.